Podcasting is networking. Cafe and Networking Podcast promotes interpreters, startups, authors, business experts throughout the world. I'm Tom Riach, known as the King of Networking, connecting people from my studio in Vinha do São Paulo, Brazil. Today we talk with Susan Collins, and she's joining us from Houston, Texas. Susan Collins is the network concierge, helping people find companies, not companies find people. She helps focused professionals see and believe in the possibilities of their careers. So Susan, for the women in our audience, where do women sell themselves short during an interview? Well, Tom, the first place women sell themselves short is by not applying. We know that men and women look at job descriptions differently, Mm -hmm. and men apply if they meet 60% of the requirements, where women look at the job description, and if they don't meet 100% of the requirements, then they don't even apply. What I like to tell my female clients is to print the job description, and then just look at the requirements and write an equal sign Mm -hmm. next to that requirement. And then think about something that they've done in their career that may not be exactly the same, but it, it shows that they have the skills that the employer is looking for. So the first place is, is that they need to apply to the job. That's, that's the number one thing. Mm -hmm. Secondly, When women are in an interview, they don't always talk about the ROI or the bottom line. Mm. They get really involved with talking about what they did, what were the tasks, how they brought people along, Mm -hmm. but they don't talk about how they contributed to the bottom line. So for example, a female sales rep may talk about all the clients she visited, the struggles she had, how she overcame them, and she'll overshare the process where a man will walk into the interview and talk about how he may have only been up 2% for the year, but his margin was 20% higher, putting $10,000 to the bottom line. So those are the two big things that I see that stand out during the interview process. The third one is, is that women are less likely to lean on their network. And as the network concierge, I'm very passionate about networking and utilizing your network. Women are hesitant to reach out and ask for help. And I believe that it's just human nature to want to help someone else. So when you reach out to your network, most of the time, they're going to respond with a positive um situation and and they're going to want to help you whether it's help you get into the company that they work at whether it's give you a reference along the way but when you don't ask you don't know and the worst thing that can happen is not asking well i agree with you and and to ask too you need to have a basic relationship with somebody and and many times what i see uh, i'm a speaker here in brazil about networking and specifically created uh, a speech for women because I've seen that women can actually interact with each other, but they don't necessarily connect, consider that networking. Uh, and women have many connections, let's say outside of their career, community activities, school activities, a number of different things. And those are all people that they have to include in what we, I consider a, a network. I absolutely agree. I think that we get so busy in our day-to-day life that we forget about all of the touch points that we have. And then we get ready to go into an interview Mm -hmm. and we think that we don't have a network because we haven't kept in touch with our last boss or Mm -hmm. we haven't kept in touch with our former colleagues when there's a whole community out there that's ready to help when you need it. Right. I see that here in Brazil. I'm, I'm a grandfather, so I'm generally going to school to pick up my grandchildren. So uh, I've created something that I call networking at the school door. Uh, And at that, I'm generally meeting a number of women who are the mothers of the children uh, at the school. And it comes to the point where I I understand and see what they do professionally, and most of them don't know what each other does professionally. That's so true, because we're talking about our kids. Right. I've got two boys, you show up at school, you talk about how Johnny and Dylan are gonna have a play date this weekend, but you don't sit down and say, I have to go to Boston for the week for my job, or mm-hmm. you know, it's not those pieces that 
pass over. We, right. we don't cross those two worlds over, and it's a hindrance for women. Well, I'm not saying we're talking about women, but men, the same thing, I find that. They come in for men, picking up kids at school, is, you know, it's objective. Open up the door, put them in, and they're gone. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> so, but then women tend to interact. Uh, but I, I think to that, but I'm talking about school. We could talk about church. We're talking about the community service you may be part of uh, to expand exactly what you say to other people. Absolutely. So to that point, what do you teach people? How do you help them get out of themselves? So I spent 20 years as a leader in talent acquisition. So what I was doing is I was helping companies find people. Mm -hmm. So I know all of the stuff that goes on in the back end, how right. to build the strategy, what the technology does. So I sit down and help people first figure out what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Do they want to do the same thing? Do they want to do something different? Do we have a big career change ahead of us? And then as we start to put together the strategy of finding that joy at work, I can help them on the back end with the search, with what their resume needs to look like, with mm -hmm. what's happening once they upload their resume into the applicant tracking system. And from there, we can create a comprehensive search to help them find the job that's going to give them what they need professionally and personally. And I saw recently on, on your LinkedIn page you have a you've posted a number of things one of them is, is have you been part of the great resignation the great realization or the great reshuffle and that's worldwide there's so much happening in, in, in the career the job market all over the world things have changed drastically we're seeing companies calling people back to the office and women are just saying, no, I, I've tried it a different way. I've done it a different way. And I need a hybrid situation. Mm -hmm. We're setting better boundaries. We're more involved in our kids' lives. We sat next to them for a year teaching them while we were working. Mm -hmm. And so we see those pieces of what we missed. And so we have different expectations right, now. Right. I, I want to I say not only teaching them, but learning from them. Uh, we've learned, we can learn so much from our kids or our grandchildren just being with them. And those are the new generations. That's what's happening right now in the world. And not even learn from them. We've also learned about them, right. you know, how they learn, what's happening in school. I think they're also coming home and communicating more to us mm -hmm. about what's happening in school because they know that we understand more. Right. And literally more in touch. More in touch. The world, okay. <laughs> I think, has found new boundaries and is more in touch with a lot of things. Very good. Well, Susan, we're coming to the end of our time. I want to thank you. Uh, but for our audience, not only women, men as well, how can they find you? Well, they can follow the Network Concierge on LinkedIn. I am also Susan Collins on LinkedIn. So there's two places you can find me there. And then you can always go to my website, thenetworkconcierge.com, where you can see a little more about what I do. And you can sign up for my weekly newsletter focused on your forward career momentum. Very good. Hope to have you back in the future. Okay, Susan? Thanks. It was a lot of fun. Okay, and for our audience again, it's Susan Collins, S-U-S-A-N. The last name is C-O-L-L-I-N-S on LinkedIn and the networkconcierge.com. Cafe Networking is brought to us by Focus MI Market Intelligence, an agricultural market research specialist in Brazil. More information on their website, www.focusmi.com. Thanks for listening until the next time here at Cafe and Networking Podcast.